When Robert Morey Jr. spent two years planning his dream home in a rural area of San Clemente, California, he put a lot of thought into picking out the perfect location and designing the perfect house. But on March 25, 1993, just five months after moving in, something happened that he had never anticipated. It's a very hilly, exclusive community. Uh, his backyard is pretty much uh, rural hills. There's very few houses in this area. Apparently the alarm indicated that there was a break-in downstairs and he uh, decided to go down and, and investigate further. Emergency? Yeah, somebody's tried breaking into my house. Are they breaking in right now? Uh, no, my alarm went off. There's a window broke. Uh, How long ago did it happen? About uh, probably a minute ago. It was the first 911 call San Clemente Police Dispatcher Wendy Anderson had ever taken. Since it was such a calm call, I wasn't nervous at all. It did not feel like a real emergency call at the time. Backing Wendy up was dispatch trainer Stephanie Oliver. And what is your name, sir? Robert Mooring, M-O-R-E-Y. Are there any rocks? What did they break the window with? I really don't know. Oh, no, 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 it's a bobcat in my house. It scared the hell out of both of us. We couldn't understand what they were saying, and the first thing that came to my mind was, they got him, they have a gun to his head. There's a what? Oh, my goodness. There's a what? A bobcat in my house. A bobcat? Oh, she's right here. What's that? Are you on a phone where you can lock the door? Uh, well, no, no, I'm right here in the kitchen. He's right here by me. Oh, no. The officers are on their way. Okay. What is the bobcat doing? Uh, he's going back and forth on granite tile. Is he, does he appear, um, stay calm, sir, first of all. Don't agitate him at all, just stay oh, calm. Uh, okay. I have officers on the way. I got it. He's, he seems to be more scared than I am. Okay, I need to tell you one thing, all right? If he comes after you and you feel that you need to, you know, fire that weapon, feel free to do so. But as soon as I have those officers on scene, I want you to put that weapon down, okay, when I tell you to. You got uh, it. Okay, I've already left. Me not knowing my animals of nature, I was picturing a mountain lion. So I'm picturing this large cat, I'm like... This guy's going to kill him. You know, I just know he's going to grab him and kill him. How big is he? Um, about as big as, a little, almost as big as my dog. Right. Oh, oh, this is what came through the damn window. Okay, that's, you think he came through the window? I think Does he so. appear hungry? What's that? Does he look gaunt? What's that? Does he appear gaunt like he hasn't eaten? Could be, yeah. Okay, how, how big would you say it? What kind of dogs do you have? Uh, Siberian Huskies. So they're pretty... He's a little smaller than them. So he's a pretty good-sized dog, or cat. Yeah. The bobcats usually attack? That I don't know. It would depend on the reason they that he came into your house to begin with. You know me, I don't know. I don't know anything about bobcats. Yeah. We're calling um, the animals, the animal people right now. No, I am right in the kitchen, staring right across from it. Okay, we, we relate that message. Where is this cat now in relation to the front door? How are we supposed to get in there? He advises the phone by the You know what? Tell him. How are going to get Oh, boy. I think if I move slow. Don't, I, don't move. Don't, right, don't even try to move. No, there's no real way for them to get in. I didn't want the cat to get him. I thought if he moved at all, the cat would tear him like a paper sack. So I wanted to keep him as still as possible till they got on scene. Patrolman Kevin O'Brien was the first officer to arrive. I worked in law enforcement for eight years, and I have never had this type of a call. And so I had no idea exactly how to handle it. 116, 101. Uh, let's just 1023, do not 
make entry until we get a hold of animal control. 10 4. The whole time we're talking back and forth on the radio. That's when I remember Lieutenant Trudeau telling us, don't go into the house. Well, that's not a problem. <laughs> when Lieutenant Bill Trudeau arrived, he took charge of the scene. Residents on the phone at the back of the house. He's got a rifle in his hand. Apparently the cat is west of him in the kitchen. Okay. So I can get to the front door. He states that he can get to the front door without exciting the cat? Yes. Just have him maintain it possible until we know otherwise. I could understand why he wanted to come out, but, uh, and I think he understood that we had concerns not only for his safety, for our safety uh, as well. So we asked him if he could just stay in there just a little bit longer, and he agreed. Okay, the officers can see you right now. Do you have the gun in your hand still? It's a rifle, but I just put it down. Okay. One up. No, no. Keep that, say, tell him to keep that gun with him. We are not going in the house, and if anything comes after him, he's going to have to shoot it. Ten four. Sir, pick the gun back up. They say to go ahead and keep it in the, your hand. Go ahead. They know that you're not going to hurt them. So. Okay. He was getting kind of antsy, like he wanted to get out of there. I didn't want him to do it, but I figured he's there, not me. And if he's that scared and think the cat's going to do something, that's up to him. Okay, sir, you're going to have to use your own judgment if you feel that you can get out the front door safe without exciting him. Because you have to realize, sir, that if you go running out that front door... Believe me, I'm not... Okay, if you can get out the front door safely, you're going to... Right now, it's your own judgment. Alrighty. The officers have covered themselves since you are going to do this. No problem. Okay. Oh, the, are you on a cordless phone by chance? No, I wish I was. Okay. I can, give you, I can sit there and talk to you all the way out. Okay. Hey, he's, stopped. He's, he's just sitting there again. Okay. And Alrighty. are you going to do it right now? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Okay. 15, 16, he should be coming out the front door. Do you want to catch the contact for Wildfire? Okay, we're going to carry this I had thought that he would probably start coming to look for me, you know. I didn't know if we were friends by this point or uh, maybe I was showing him the way out of the house. I could see the policeman out front behind the car and they were telling me to close the door. At this point I thought, don't you want me to leave it open and maybe he'll come out? They said, no, let's close the door. 115, can you advise when he's out of the residence, code 4? He's out, it's code 4. 115, can you ask CRP if you lay the phone on the floor? I'll just write, uh, stolen next to my little... That's a firm. 104, I think he's eating it. CRP? Negative, it's a cat. I'm thinking a lion. This is going to be a big cat if it's chewing on the phone. Within 30 minutes of the call, Orange County Animal Control Officer Larry Sear got to the house. Bobcats don't normally pose a threat to humans because we're so much larger than they are. But if they were cornered, they can be very dangerous. He gave one of those uh, wildcat growls, which really, I didn't think it would affect me that much, but it really made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. People tell me, oh, bobcats are docile, they won't hurt you. And I'm like, you didn't see this bobcat fight the, the animal control guy when he was leaving. This bobcat would have killed me, you know. I think the biggest lesson about wildlife that we've learned is uh, just more or less to leave them alone. We can live with the wildlife. But when you interfere, either trying to be helpful or hurtful, either way, then you cause large problems. It's real quiet out here, and I like that quietness. But uh, we see a lot of uh, animals running around. We kind of live in their uh, backyards. You, you just got to hope that, you know, the mountain lion doesn't come right behind the bobcat and come into your house. Come on. Everything went right, and it, it makes you feel good. Everybody's happy. The bobcat's happy, back in its environment, and I'm sure if that bobcat could talk to you, he's going to have one heck of a story to tell his friends.
next. He started turning red and I realized that he was choking. I was just so scared that my mind was just a total blank.